In today's video, we're gonna learn how to get better outputs with artificial intelligence, and that is model distillation. So in this video, I'm gonna show you from start zero all the way to start done how to do this in your workflow. Sound good? Let's jump in. To give some context of what this even does, here is a evaluation. So I provided some test data here, and as you can see, it failed most, but it did pass one. So let me show you how to do this. And to take a step back, we can identify what's a failing or a succeeding version of an output from a ChatGPT prompt. This allows us to get better outputs at scale. Let's proceed. I'll make sure to leave this in the description down below so you can walk through step-by-step step on how you can do it yourself. But the first thing we need is to get a data set. E.g., this was the input we got. This is the output we got. How do we train it to get better outputs? Now, what is really cool, like extremely cool, is that if you add this Boolean here, which is store equals true, this allows you to actually get real inputs and outputs that you can start evaluating. This will show up in your sidebar here at chat completions. The data will start showing up here and you'll simply hit evaluate. As shown with this image here, where it's like a tech support type of chat GPT bot here, we are able to take all like the real inputs and outputs and hit evaluate. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it with some test data. And the reason I'm gonna show you how to do it with some test data is because some of y'all might just be like, I wanna see what's up here. I wanna check it out. I wanna see how to do it. Let me show you how to do it. Therefore, let's go and begin. We're gonna come over here to evaluations. In evaluations, we're gonna hit create. Once we're in create here, we're gonna hit import test data. Now let me show you how to create some test data together. I suggest you to use something like VS Code, Cursor AI, some type of IDE. This is gonna allow us to create the test data that's relevant, which is a JSON L file. Go ahead and launch your IDE. This is Cursor AI. And what you're gonna do is hit command new, control new, create a new file here. Once you create a new file here, let's go ahead and just save. Name it whatever you want. We'll just put test data. And then we're gonna put dot, JSON L. This is extremely important that it has to be this file type for this to work. Hit save. There we go. So far, so good. We have the correct format. Now I've gone ahead and pasted some test data I've done in the past, which is creating Marv, which is a factual chat bot that is also sarcastic. I'll see about putting this like in a Google Drive folder and I'll put it in the description down below and allow you just to download this test file so you can use it yourself. So if that exists, just check the description. It should be like test data, click it, Google Drive link, download. So make sure to leave a like, it's free for the free value. But the idea here is this, if you're familiar with prompting and structuring prompts, when it comes to API and specifically OpenAI, typically what happens is that we have a system prompt. We provide the system prompt, so we wanna have repetition on what the underlying bot is specifically gonna do here. So Marv is a factual chat bot that's also sarcastic. Then the next part of the prompt here is typically the user and what the user says, like the user's input, e.g. what's the capital of France? And then finally, the output, the assistant. And from this output, we have Paris, as if everyone doesn't know that already. For test data, and when you are testing this kind of logic, go ahead and make sure you have 10 different rows here. It's also extremely important that when you save this file, you save it and you don't have like, oh, there's 16 lines, I'm gonna save it, import it. No, 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 no. You will get an error. Make sure it's 10, hit command save, and now you have your test data. Obviously, your test data can be anything, whether you're making a customer support bot, whether you're making a storyteller bot, the name of the game here is the idea is we want whatever the input comes in, this is the specific output we like. That's why in this context, we're giving like general questions, like what's the capital of Texas, and then giving sarcastic answers. So we are training it to be a sarcastic factual bot. Now that we have that test data here, let's go to import. Here we go. I have the test data uploaded. Test data JSON. Click it. Hit import. Now that we have it imported and ready to go, the next thing we can do here is either generate responses, which I'll probably do in a future video, so make sure you subscribe here to check that out. But in this video, I just wanna show you how to test with it, how to evaluate. Now we come to adding testing criteria. This is gonna show us whether this is a good output or output based off our preferences. We're gonna add. With this, we have a bunch of pre-built options here, such as factuality, sediment, test quality. For us, we're gonna check out sediment here, see if it picks up on the sarcastic part. I'm gonna hit sediment. I'm gonna provide the item messages as what we're going to be analyzing. And then what we're grading with is very important here. So you wouldn't wanna choose GB240 Mini because the whole point of what we're doing here is we're gonna use a higher level model, like GB240, ON Mini, ON Preview, to grade a lower level model, like GB240 Mini, or like 3.5 if you're still using that, etc. Then in the context of sediment, we can give either positive, neutral, or negative for a passing grade. I have no clue how AI interprets sarcasm, so I'm gonna see what it says if the passing grade's negative. Hit add. Following this, we can go ahead and estimate the underlying cost to the amount of tokens that are gonna be expended based off of this. There we go. And we're gonna go. Hit run. So we got our results here and it's actually pretty funny here. So the idea behind sarcasm is like that could be interpreted as negative. And as you see, like 60% of the results were negative. So I guess our barometer in this context is very much so if it's failing, 
e.g. the Romeo and Juliet question or how many planets are in the solar system, it wasn't sarcastic enough. Therefore, we need to restructure the output so it's more sarcastic and would pass this test. That's the idea here, though, which is really cool, is our ability to put in a ton of inputs and a ton of outputs. Imagine in the context that you put that flag that we saw earlier, we actually get real data getting flowed in, and we have like 100 inputs and 100 outputs that we can then test to see for whatever we want. So in this context, it's sediment. And we got a 60%, which is like a D. We need to up our prompts. That is how we start leveraging the new ability provided by OpenAI here. If you wanna learn how to start prompting with ChatGPT in a more effective way, make sure to check out this channel here. I believe two days ago, three days ago, I show you how to successfully prompt with the most advanced model 01 preview. So if that interests you, either click my face down there or just type in Corbin Brown 01. I'll see you in the next video. We got a 60%. We didn't fail or I guess some context that could be failing. Those are random videos. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.